the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Well, good morning and welcome. Um, it's uh, Gaudete Sunday, so we get to wear these rose, <coughs> rose colored vestments. And as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us take a moment to acknowledge our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let, let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain, to attain the joys of so great a salvation, and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, and to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord, and my God is the joy of my soul for he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything, retain what is good, Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you ent entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, What are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? So we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of the one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet said, some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. But there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's readings are an invitation to joy, an invitation to joy. 
There's no should, there's no must, but it's an invitation. You know, we, we hear in today's second reading, St. Paul says, rejoice always. Well, the Latin word for rejoice is karate, and that's why we celebrate um, with the rose-colored vestments, with the, 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 the rose-colored candle on the advent wreath. The readings are all about joy. There's a wonderful quote I, I came across this morning from St. Philip Neri. He was the saint known as the saint of joy. He said, a joyful heart is made more perfect than one that is cast down. So why do we rejoice? Well, that's a good question. I think our gospel gives us some insights. Our gospel in the first reading. We rejoice because God loves us for who we are. Not for what we do. God loves us for who we are. Not for what we do. If you listen closely to today's gospel, you know, it's, it's almost like they're at a... <laughs> um, hey, this is where my mind goes. But... Um, it's like they're at a cocktail party and people are saying, you know, well, what do you do for a living? Hey, John the Baptist, you who are wearing, you know, those wild clothes, what do you do for a living? Are you a prophet? No. Are you Elijah? No. Well, what do you do? Really, what do you do? And he says, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord. He knows his identity. Do we? We're not what we do for a living. Our identity is so, so much more. We live in a world that values, right, efficiency, productivity, all these things. And sometimes when it comes to our notion of self, we fall into this trap of this materialistic notion of what it means to be a human person. God loves us as we are, not for what we do. Remember when God created Adam and Eve, he, he looked at them and said, Behold, you are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter. I love you. And he's never stopped looking at the human race, never stopped acknowledging that same beauty and that same love and that same goodness. It's such an important message. You know, the holidays can be a challenging time of year for, for some people. And that's why I said this is an inv invitation to joy, not a, a should or a must. The invitation is our Father in heaven. Our Father who in the prophet Zephaniah, we get a little glimpse of who this Father is. He's, the prophet Zephaniah says that he rejoices over one, us as one sings at festivals. God is singing over us. Do you hear the music? You know, we're blessed at this mass with our youth choir. We're blessed at this mass to, for the young people that are reading, that are serving, that are singing. We're so, so blessed. Do we hear the music? The prophet Isaiah says, I rejoice heartily in the Lord, and my God is the joy of my soul, for he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. You know, we have a baptism after Mass. At our baptism, that's what God does. He clothes us. He makes us a new creation. We're anointed with holy oil and sacred chrism. And God promises that he's going to walk with us every single step of the way. So really, it's, it's an invitation 
to keep singing. You know, I go to Dunkin' Donuts every morning. I feel like I, I told them I should be on one of their commercials. I, you know, America runs on Dunkin', and Father Walter runs on Dunkin', too. Um, but, uh, you know, they have a Grinch in there, and, um, and the Grinch kept singing the other day, and the, the poor lady behind the counter said, I'm going to unplug that Grinch. <laughs> But what's the beautiful truth that's communicated by the story of the Grinch? Cindy Lou Who and the people of Whoville kept singing. The Grinch tried to steal their joy. The Grinch came along and tried to take away all their presents, take away everything. The Grinch couldn't because they kept on singing. They kept on singing. Cindy Lou Who and the people of Whoville just kept on singing. You know, um, that's why I, I, trust me, I've seen other movies than Finding Nemo, The Lion King, and what's the other one I'm always quoting? Uh, I do see other movies, but in the movie Finding Nemo, remember what Dory said? She said, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Well, I think, you know, for us, we need to just keep singing. Singing, in good times and in bad. I remember I was, I was at a youth conference, I was in seminary, and I wasn't exactly feeling joyful. Grumble, grumble, why do I have to go to this mass? Blah, 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 blah. And I go into the, the field house full of thousands of young people, and what were they singing? I rejoice when they said to me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. Standing there, O Jerusalem, let us go unto the house of the Lord. You couldn't help but rejoice. You couldn't help but, but feel your heart lifted. That's what singing does. You know, St. Paul writes about joy all the time. He was in prison when he wrote his letter to the Philippians. And the Philippians' letter is uh, all about joy. How is that possible? Because he knows who the Lord Jesus Christ is. And he knows what God has done for him. He knows that the Spirit of the Lord was with Jesus and that the Lord anointed him, set him to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives and release to prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication for our God in just a week. That's what we're going to be celebrating. The God of the universe, the God who created all this beautiful world that you and I live in. The birds, the hummingbirds, the monarchs, the osprey, the fly that is, you know, flying around my bathroom. Um, all these living creatures, you and I, created this beautiful world and was born into it to show us what it means to be alive. And what was his message? His message was very simply what I said at the beginning. I love you because of who you are, not because of what you do. Today, rejoice in that love. There's a wonderful saint in the Catholic Church. Her name is Saint um, Elizabeth of the Trinity. And she, right before she died, she was a Carmelite nun. She wrote to her mother superior. She said, Jesus says to you, let yourself be loved. Not because of what you do, but because of who you are. Let yourself be loved, and in doing so, you will magnify my love. Jesus doesn't say to you, as he said to Simon Peter, do you love me more than these? No, he says, let yourself be loved. Great advice. God loves us, not because of what we do, but because of who we are.
and rejoice and keep singing. As St. Philip Neri said, a joyful heart is made more perfect than one that is cast down. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, who is incarnate of the Virgin Mary, Man. For our sake he was crucified on a Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, he rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of Proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, who confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God's word tells us to patiently await all the good things that the Savior brings. With confidence, we make our needs known to him. That Pope Francis, all bishops and church leaders will reflect God's truth and love to the world by the integrity of their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may teach the world the patience it needs to await the coming of the Lord of justice, peace, and life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders may prepare the way for the coming of the Lord by fostering harmony, authentic dialogue, and sincere concern for their people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That through the prayers of Our Lady of Guadalupe, patroness of America, and our, our land may be protected and blessed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we realize suffering is a gift and helps us build empathy for others and build our dependence on God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That through daily prayer, we gain patience and align ourselves with God and his plan for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died may experience the renewed life wrought by the coming of the Savior. We pray for those who have recently died. Raymond Ingram Sr., Polly Becker, Maureen Thornton, Deacon Albert J. Cody, a permanent deacon of the Diocese of Norwich, and especially for Margaret Kelly, and Walter Nagel Sr. on the first anniversary of his passing, for whom this 10.30 a.m. Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. You know, Jesus was born in, into a region that is torn by war now, so we pray for peace in the Middle East, pay for peace in Ukraine and Russia, and peace in those parts of the world that are, are experiencing conflict and innocent people are, are dying and suffering. For all of those intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Father, as you hear our prayers, give us patience and lead us to the joy of eternal salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplished for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, 
our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. A similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one of the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, with the clergy, the religious, and your entire people, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day and our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
For those joining us at home, we'll make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Together we'll pray the St. Michael prayer. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. We are protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Just a few announcements. Um, please take home a copy of the bulletin see um, all the different mass schedules for, for the fourth Sunday of Advent and, and then Christmas. It's going to be a lot of church next weekend. <laughs> um, but it's all good. And you'll also see um, we have extended confession times. I call confession the sacrament of joy. It uh, brings so, so much healing. So take advantage of that time. The times are in the bulletin. Um, also, you'll see that our, our pro-life committee has, has a, a chocolate and candy sale in the narthex. And um, just want to give a very special thanks to our, our youth choir, our readers, our altar servers, and everyone that made today such a special mass. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Friday, so there will be no Eucharistic adoration afterwards. So let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast. Through Christ our Lord, Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.